Spurgeon here with Revzilla, and today we're going to discuss with you how to buy a new motorcycle. So years before I started working at Revzilla alongside this big galoot, I actually worked at a dealership level where I worked with new riders to help them navigate through the buying process. And that's what I hope to do with you in this video. We're going to walk you through how to buy a new motorcycle. This will be part of a larger video series where we discuss with you how to choose your motorcycle as well as how to buy a motorcycle. And we're going to split that buying process into two separate sections. So if you're interested in how to buy a used motorcycle from a private party, that's where old Lem Lem comes into play. He actually has a separate video walking you through that process. So make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube to keep up with all the content we have rolling out at Revzilla.com. Now the first thing you're gonna to need to consider before ever setting foot in a showroom floor is insurance costs. Keep in mind, if you're planning on financing your new motorcycle, nearly every bank out there is gonna require you to carry full coverage insurance, and full coverage insurance can get quite costly. So there are a few ways to circumnavigate some of those additional costs. First of all, consider a smaller displacement motorcycle. Oftentimes, a larger displacement bike is gonna carry a higher insurance premium with it. So if you go with a lower displacement bike, not only do you save money on the cost of the motorcycle, but you're also gonna save money on your insurance premium. And make sure you shop around to different insurance companies out there because different insurance companies rate motorcycles differently. When I bought my first bike, I actually saved about $1,000 a year over what my auto policy holder was gonna charge me. So it's really important to look at what's available out there from a variety of different companies. Now, another way to save some money is to consider an MSF discount. A lot of times insurance providers will offer you a 5 or a 10% discount on your coverage if you've taken some kind of additional rider training. Really what the insurance companies want to see is that you know how to use and ride the motorcycle. Another thing to inquire about would be whether or not they're going to offer some kind of accessory coverage. Keep in mind, unlike auto policies, which are really kind of cut and dry, a lot of times you can get accessory coverage worked into your deal. So not only is the motorcycle covered, but the gear that you're wearing, as well as anything you've added to the bike or any covered as well. Now the final thing to inquire about is going to be gap coverage. It's going to cover the gap between what your bike is currently worth and what you currently owe on it. So any depreciation that occurs, you're not left holding the bag on that. The last thing you wanna do is to be continuing to pay on a motorcycle you no longer own because of some kind of an unfortunate accident. Now, speaking of making payments on the motorcycle, once you have your insurance figured out, that's gonna be the next step in the process. How are you planning on paying for this new bike? There's a lot of folks out there that would encourage you to pay cash. I'm not necessarily one of them because I think that financing a motorcycle is a great way for new or younger riders to establish credit. So when they go to make a larger purchase later in life, that credit is there waiting for them to use. Now, I'm not saying to walk blindly into a dealership. It's always important to check with your local bank or credit union to get an idea of what they're willing to finance you for before you walk into the dealership floor. Having that knowledge in your back pocket is gonna be key. Now, before you can ask a motorcycle dealership to beat your offer, you have to have one in mind, and that's gonna bring us to the final step in the process, choosing a motorcycle dealership that you trust. One of the biggest problems that I see with motorcyclists is they equate a good price on a motorcycle with a good dealership experience, and that's simply not the case. Personally, I would rather spend a few extra dollars on the motorcycle if I know that the dealership is gonna be there to support me for the entire time that I own that bike. So the question becomes, how do you find a good dealership? Well, the easiest way to do this is simply spend some time hanging out at them. So find your local dealerships and every other Saturday, show up for an hour or two, walk around, see if they're hosting any different events. Chances are if a dealership's having a barbecue and they're having a hard time getting people to show up for free food, it's probably not the place you wanna go buy a motorcycle. Now, as for me, I've done my homework and I have an idea of where I wanna go to buy my next bike. So let's head out right now and see if I can't procure myself a new motorcycle. So we're here today at Martin Moto, and you might be asking yourself why. Well, the answer's simple. This is the type of dealership I'd recommend for you to look for in your neck of the woods. It's a full service shop with a wide variety of different makes and models under one roof, full financing, sales, service, as well as parts, and they've got loaner bikes for you to choose from for when your bike's in the shop. Now, in addition to that, they also host a wide variety of different events, and they really work to foster a motorcycle community. So needless to say, this is my type of place. Let's head in right now and check out and see what they currently have on the showroom floor.
So the first thing you want to do when you get inside is spend some time looking at the selection of motorcycles available. After all, this is the fun part. There's a bunch of brand new shiny machines sitting around for you to take a peek at. Now chances are you already have an idea in your noggin as to which motorcycle you're there to see, but don't be afraid to you know, see if there's anything new available that piques your interest. And at a showroom like Martin, there's pretty much one of everything represented here for you to look at when you're determining what you want to get. Now, if you're at a smaller dealership, that might not be the case. So keep that in mind. If there's a bike that you have in your head that you think you want and you don't see it, don't be afraid to ask if maybe it's hanging around out back. Now, as for me, I've done my homework. And this Honda CB500F is gonna make a great around town commuter while saving money on gas. The one thing I haven't done, however, is I haven't spent any time on the motorcycle itself. I'm a larger rider, and it's gonna be important to make sure that I fit on this bike. So now would be a great time to get a salesperson into the mix. Hey, welcome to Martin Moto, I'm Rob. Hey Rob, I'm Spurge, it's nice to meet you. So I've been looking at this bike, I've got some info, I wouldn't mind a little bit more information on it, but really what I wanna know is, can I sit on this for a while? Absolutely, feel free to throw your leg over any of the bikes in the showroom, make sure you're comfortable on them, and while you're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and get you more information on this Honda. Awesome, man, thank you so much. So like Lem and I discussed in our How to Choose a Motorcycle video, this is really important. You wanna make sure you spend time sitting on the motorcycle and making sure you feel comfortable. This would also be a great time for you to talk to your salesperson about the availability for a test ride. Now, test rides are gonna vary drastically from dealership to dealership. But if you get the opportunity to take one out for a spin, that's always going to be great. You can also inquire about the availability for a demo day. A demo day is where a dealership's going to open up their entire fleet and you're going to be able to test out a variety of different motorcycles to see which one fits you best. But the cold hard truth of the matter is if you're a new rider, if you're wet behind the ears, there's a good chance that you're going to be buying the motorcycle without getting a chance to ride it first. And that's really why it's so important that you spend really just time in the dealership on the floor familiarizing yourself with the motorcycle. This is also a great time to carry on that conversation with your sales rep. This is a chance for you to ask questions about the bike, the buying process, and if they don't have the answer for you like you just saw Rob go, he's gonna go and get me more information about the bike. They should be able to kind of just make the process seamless and easy for you while making you comfortable at the same time. So let's check back in with Rob and see what he found out for me on this CB500. Hey, thanks man. So, I, uh, I have to admit, I'm a little bit torn between the non-ABS and the ABS version. Is there anything you guys can do for me on the price of the ABS bike? Uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot I can do with this bike. I do have some leftovers in the back, though, that have ABS. Are you set on getting the current model year? I mean, not really. As long as it's the same bike, it doesn't bother me in the least. Um, I would be interested in hearing about prices for additional warranty, though. Absolutely. Let me get started working up some prices on both models. Um, are you going to be financing with us today? So, here's the deal. I have secured financing through my bank. If you can beat that number, however, I'd you know, be very willing to work with one of your banks. Absolutely, let me get started on this, and then I'll meet you over at the sales desk in a few minutes. Thanks, man. So, what most riders might not realize is that on some of these smaller displacement bikes, there's not a lot of margin left for dealerships to negotiate when it comes to price, so I wouldn't expect to see too much of a price break on some of these smaller bikes. However, there are some additional ways you can save some money. For example, if you're okay with a leftover model, a bike that's not the most current in model year, but it still comes with a full factory warranty, you can usually save a few dollars on a leftover because of rebates that the OEMs have applied to that bike. If you absolutely have to have the newest, brightest, shiniest model year machine, you can always talk to your dealership about maybe some value adds, maybe some parts, some accessories, some gear, or additional warranty. A lot of times dealerships are willing to work with you on this, especially if you're financing the bike through their dealership. Now, speaking of which, this is the time that most motorcycle dealerships are going to know how you're planning on paying for that bike. They want their money, you want a brand new motorcycle sitting in your garage. So there's a few ways you could handle this. You can always go to your bank and get a pre-approval and just treat this like a cash transaction. The other way you could do it, you could simply pay cash. But my guess is a lot of you out there are gonna to wanna to be considering financing options for this motorcycle. So while it's always a great idea to secure financing with your bank ahead of time, I'd always recommend giving the dealership a chance to beat your financial offer. And I say this because the last time I came in to buy a bike, they were able to beat my bank's offer by a substantial amount getting me a better interest rate. Keep in mind, that's all these guys do. They sell and finance motorcycles. Another advantage of actually financing through a dealership is gonna be the fact that you can work in additional parts, accessories, and even warranty 
into the financing itself. So instead of having a larger upfront cost to outfit the bike the way you want it, you can simply work it into your financing and get a small bump in your monthly payment. And the beauty of doing this at the dealership level is you don't have to go back and forth with your bank multiple times to get new approvals for new amounts for that cost as it begins to rise. Speaking of which, I'm gonna check in with Rob right now. I'm gonna see what he was able to do for me on this little Honda. All right, what do you got for me? All right, so like I thought, I can't do anything about pricing on the bike you were sitting on, but I do have that leftover in the back that has ABS and it qualifies you for some additional rebates as well as a discount on an extended warranty should you purchase it today. Dude, this looks awesome. So just so I'm clear though, this is the exact same bike just with ABS and a model year older. Yep, exact same bike. And I was also able to get better financing than you were gonna be able to get with your bank pending a credit approval. This sounds great to me. My only question is, can I leave with it today? I want to go ride. Absolutely. Uh, I'll have them start prepping it while you're filling out your paperwork. That way, once it's all set, we can get you on your bike today. This sounds great, man. Thank you. So this has obviously been a simplified example of how the buying process works, but it should give you a good idea of what you can expect when you're getting a new motorcycle. Some of the things we didn't talk about were additional warranty, accessories, as well as service contracts. If you're not familiar, service contract is where you pay a little bit more money up front for an additional set amount of service. If you're the kind of person that doesn't like working on your bike or you rack up a lot of miles, this can be a real value add for you. The other thing to note here is that this is a point in time where I'm forking over the cash as the buyer. If I'm using a bank check or if I'm just paying cash, it's gonna be pretty much a done deal. I hand over the funds. If I'm going through financing with the dealership, I would sit down, I'd take some time, and I'd fill out the extra paperwork to make sure that I'm squared away. Things like uh, the actual loan application would be taken care of at this point in time. The other thing that you didn't see me do was discuss anything about taxes or government or regulations, and that would be taken care of at this point in time too. One of the value adds that you get from purchasing at a dealer is that you don't have to go somewhere else to take care of all that additional paperwork the way you would if you were buying at a third party. Here at a dealership, they take care of the licensing, the registration, as well as any kind of a license plate or taxes that would be associated with that. Uncle Sam's gotta make their money one way or another. It's just nice that the dealership is gonna take care of all that paperwork for me. Now, you heard me ask Rob if I'd be able to leave with that motorcycle today, and that's because I wanna be very clear with him. I want that bike. It's important for you to do the same. You need to set your expectations of what you want out of the motorcycle buying experience, and that's because if you're at a smaller dealership, they might have to order the bike in, or they might have to prep the bike or uncrate it or even assemble it in some cases. Even in a dealership like Martin, like this, there's gonna be some service that has to be gone through. So just make sure you're very clear on what you're expecting from them and you shouldn't have any disappointments. Now I was clear with Rob, I wanna leave on that bike today. So I'm gonna sit down and finish my paperwork and then I'm gonna meet you guys all out in the service department on my new bike. So the paperwork's done, the bike is serviced, but there's still a few things that need to be looked at before I leave on this motorcycle. So you wanna make sure a member of the staff goes over the bike with you. You need to know where the controls are located. In this case, that member of the staff is gonna be Rob, the guy that sold me the bike. So he's gonna walk me through exactly what I can expect from a control standpoint. He's also gonna make sure I know exactly where the toolkit as well as the owner's manual are located. But he's not gonna be done there. He's then gonna introduce me to the service staff because once the sale's complete, the service staff is the member of the staff that you're gonna probably interact with most at a dealership level for taking the bike in for its regular maintenance as well as any possible warranty work that might pop up. So it's really important to understand exactly how they operate. Ask them a few questions. For example, can you just drop the bike off for service? Do you have walk-ins? Or do you always need to schedule an appointment? In addition to that, do they have pickup service? Will they come to your house and get the bike for you? Or at the very least, if you drop the bike off, do they have some kind of a loaner bike program for you to get back home once you're done? Understanding exactly how your service department works will take all the guesswork out of having to drop the bike off so there's no surprises down the road. Now the final thing you need to figure out before you leave here is how you're getting the bike home. So if you're not completely comfortable in your riding ability with this motorcycle, it might be the time to call a friend or a family member with a truck or a trailer and see if they'll help get the bike back to your house. Or at the very least, reach out to the dealership themselves and see if they have a way to drop the bike off for you. As for me, I'm gonna do this the old fashioned way. I've got insurance on the motorcycle, I've got my gear here, so I'm gonna suit up and I'm going home on two wheels.
So keep in mind that everything we talked about today is just an example and every dealership will be a little bit different. If you want some additional research right now, you can head over to Common Tread and read one of the articles we penned on you know, how to haggle for a bike, some of the different bikes that are available for you, as well as how to select the right bike for you. This is all gonna be valuable research if you're just starting out as a motorcyclist. You can always check out one of our other videos too. Lem Lem and I did a video on how to select a motorcycle and he also did a great job helping you navigate the perils of Craigslist in how to buy a used bike. So make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube to keep up with all the content we have rolling out at RevZilla.com. As for me, I want to thank you for joining us today at Martin Moto as we discussed how to buy a new bike. I'm Spurge. Enjoy the ride. <laughs>